Welcome to Sports Style Fashion. Who are you and what do you do? Um, I'm Brock Parks. I ride for PBM um, in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can just get this a bit, isn't it? Out. <laughs> all these people that come to my place that aren't welcome, right. and, you know? This is really good. <laughs> can no, you move your BMW out, please? You just please? got into the interview. Come a bit closer, because I can sit on your car. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we, um, we only have Porsches here, not BMWs, okay? Do they make bikes? <laughs> Keep coming, mate. You're right. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. This is going to be great. <laughs> so, this is alright because we can all add this in. <laughs> he must be doing well. <laughs> no, he's just riding for a BMW. Oh, yeah. So now he's got a new car. Flash and I. I'll add it. Oh, what's happening now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is going on? <laughs> okay. Welcome to sports style fashion. Yep. Who are you and what do you do? My name's Brock Parks. I race for MotoGP for PBM. Um, here we are in Andorra enjoying a, a good old Aussie barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brock, congratulations. Is it fair to say you're the oldest rookie in MotoGP? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we try and keep that bit quiet. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, yeah, I am the oldest rookie in MotoGP and um, you know, at the older age of 32, I still hope I have at least another four or five years left in me. But um, while we're there, we'll just try and you know make the most of it and see what I can do. Um, talk about um, your highlights of your career before MotoGP. Yeah, probably um, being runner-up a couple of times in World Supersport. That would have been um, you know the highlights. I, I would have liked to try and win a world championship and uh, been a little bit unlucky a couple of times but that's racing and um, you know I still hope before I you know retire that I can try and be a world champion either it's in world Superbike or GP or I don't know where you know but um, I just really like to try and be one time world champion before the end of my career. Okay um, you've communicated in MotoGP that you know does a bike help your performance yeah it's fairly important and you know or, or motorcycle racing or motorsports you know you got to have a good bike good team good guys working around you and um, you know all this costs a lot of money and you know to get to there you have to you have to work pretty hard and have to be a little bit lucky and have some things go your way and um, you know this year for me is difficult it's my first year in MotoGP but I'm in one of the smallest teams in the the GP paddock so it's it's going to be a hard year for me being the first year and being such a small team in such a, a big world but we're just going to try and um, make the most of what we've got and you know if I do a good job maybe somebody can see it and then give me an opportunity for a better bike. How fast are you going? Uh, you know top speeds are about 340 kilometres um, even I think the, the, the top guys can even go quicker than that so I think we got 328 or something at the first round, so you know they're, they're quite quick. And uh, the, the 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 real top MotoGP bikes will probably go another 10, 15 kilometres quicker. Um, what are you thinking at that speed? Are you thinking? Well, everything happens quite slow, you know. Um, after a while, you try and slow yourself, your your brain right down to. To, to feel like you're going a lot slower but when you first get on and the bike's so quick it feels like you're doing like 400 kilometers an hour so <laughs> um, but after being on the bike for a while you know everything gets a lot easier and it, um, it just becomes normal I guess. I mean you talk about the obstacles of the bike but you've got experience above the rest of the guys so how do you mentally keep sort of coming from behind so to speak? Um, yeah I think this year is the hardest thing is because I've stepped up to the biggest, the penultimate, you know, series and for me the most difficult thing is to be last, you know, I'm not used to being last all the time. You know, last year I, I, I won the Australian Championship and um, we were really, you know, at the top of our game and winning races and stuff, so to come back into a, a different championship and be at the back, it, it's, it's a little bit hard, but, you know, it's going to be a long season and I'm going to have to put up with it and just, you know, every race just try and better myself and then... You know, hopefully if something comes along, I'll be ready. Um, 
you achieved something already that your team's never done. You got a point. Yeah. What, congratulations. Well, what on earth does that mean? Nah, that's really big for them, you know, for me for the first race to, you know, to get one point. I think last year they, um, I think they scored about three or four for the whole year and it was early in the season. So um, they were really happy and I was a little bit lucky. And But I can't complain because, you know, people try and do it their whole life to make a point in MotoGP. So um, it's good to get that, you know, off your back and then hopefully we can score a lot more. I had the pleasure of interviewing Leon Camio, who's super bike rider. What's the difference between the super bikes and motor GP? Um, you know, there's not a massive difference. You know, the the GPs always they're they're based on a um, you know a, a prototype bike and super bikes production bikes. So, you know, the the GP bikes are you know a little bit more special than a than a super bike. But in general, I think you know it's it's all very. You can, it's all the same. Uh, suit bike, I guess, is you know probably not as recognised as MotoGP, and you know MotoGP is the number one, and um, you know Leon, he's at the top of world suit bike, and I'm sure if he was on the right bike in MotoGP, he'd be on the top in GP as well. What's your legacy? You've been doing it for how long? Yeah, I started motorcycle racing at the age of five, so. Um, you know, I've done it my whole life and, you know, now I'm getting a bit older and, you know, I'm hoping that I was always going to retire at 35, but I feel now that the body and everything's quite good and I hope I can get some more years in the World Championship. Um, you know, I just really enjoy it. I don't really know what to do outside of motor motorcycle racing and it's just been my life, but things are starting to change now. I've got kids and they want to get into sports and... Uh, well ever I can be at the top of my game and still be in the World Championship I will but when that time comes to, to go back I'd like to try and do maybe three or four years in Australia and then um, uh, maybe then you know look at getting Jesse or whatever whatever comes and enjoy life and relax a little bit. You're a father or two, would you say that's a negative in the race because you can't really ride sort of extreme as a rest or it's uh, for me it doesn't matter I don't even think really of the kids when I'm on the track to be honest <laughs> it's um yeah no it doesn't doesn't bother me I you know that I'd rather them you know look up and know that I'd put a hundred percent and into my racing and every time I got on the bike then you know to go out on track and think that about them and not putting in everything so to me I just go out I ride exactly the same all the time I give 110 and and um you know, every now and then, of course, you're going to have accidents and stuff like that. That just comes with the game, and you just got to be prepared and have the best surroundings around you. So when something does happen, that you're always ready to, um, you know, get, I guess, fixed as quick as you can and get back out on track. There was a test ride recently. You showed me a fantastic photo, but you were actually running after your bike. What happened there? <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess I was pushing the limits a little bit in Qatar. Um, you know, the first test was three days in Sepang and I just basically wanted to learn the bike, learn the track, learn the tyres and get up to speed as quick as I could and um, I guess I was a little bit more tame there than the last test in Qatar and in Qatar I wanted to push the limits and find the limits of the bike and um, I crashed twice actually in the three day test which is more than I crashed all last year. Last year I crashed two times in the whole season but this is like all new for me so I'm just trying to, you know, push Every time I get on it, and I guess I found the limit, and yeah, I was chasing after my bike. <laughs> um, when you crash, like, yeah. are you thinking? And I ask Lee on the same question. And yeah, you know, uh, when you crash, you, it's just a part of the game, you know. I'd hate to imagine how many times I crashed during my career. It's just, you know, how big the crashes are going to be, and then if you can get up and, you know, get straight back on it. And, um, you know, I didn't really want to crash straight away. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to you know slowly build into it but this is the game and I'm learning like every time I get on the bike every lap I do I'm learning so much of this this new MotoGP bike so it's gonna happen I guess. Um, I'm the co-founder of a, an online mail magazine it's about image. Yeah. Image count now as a MotoGP rider. Talk us through that. Yeah I guess you know MotoGP has got the biggest image of like from our side in motorcycle world so um you know, it's 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 a lot more image, I guess you could say, than where I came from in World Superbike, and um, you know, it's really nice to see all these kids that are you know wanting to be like your next Valentino Rossi, and um, I guess now Mark Marquez. So um, yeah, I think it's really cool. You know, like 
you know, a lot of motorsport guys and they get looked up to a lot so I think it's quite important to um, have a good image and you know I just try to be that Aussie battler and I hope that comes off. Oh Brock, you know we're gonna we're excited to see where you go and um, may the best rider win. Yeah thank you. Anything else well, you could add in there it's really nice. Yeah it's really good. No I think that's pretty much yeah. it we're just in living the dream I guess you could say and uh, hopefully it'll last a bit longer. Brilliant. Just, um, I'm liking your t-shirt here. Yeah, that's Alpine Star. I've been lucky enough to have a long relationship with Alpine Star ever since I came to Europe in 2001 and um, they're a great image and uh, probably one of the best companies I've had the privilege to work with. How much pressure as a sponsor do you feel when you're riding? Because yeah. they're paying your salary, they're paying your way, isn't it? Yeah, you know, like we're, I've been lucky enough to have Alpine Star and Arai helmets my whole career and, um, you know, it's I've got a, such a good relationship with them, I don't get any pressure. It's just a matter of every year working together with them and trying to get the best circumstance. And, um, you know, I've been good to them, they've been good to me, so hopefully I can continue the rest of my career with them and finish with them and they can look after me when I retire. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much for your time, Rob. Thank you. Appreciate it. I just want to scan you in now. Okay. That was really nice. Cool. It was really, you see, it's not difficult. That's okay. Yeah, no one takes